What's on that map? Okay. So. I gonna have it on you. I'll start it on this. Okay, okay. so we're videoing the fire okay. now. Now right. we're gonna make Brenda nervous. So there you go. All Tell right. us what we got going, sir. Okay, so um, so yeah, we're we're um, so we're conducting a prescribed burn here, and we're we're focused on on turkeys on uh, wildlife habitat, and the reason we are we're burning this like this is called a backing fire, and we block up our timber, and we set these fires. Because the humidity is so low, right now humidity is about 20%. The winds are about 8 miles an hour. What would you say is ideal humidity? In and um, so, so you'd like the humidity to be in around the middle 30s, but because of the fuel loading in this track, we're able to burn it um, a little hotter. Um, we, this track is burnt every other mm -hmm. year, so we don't have much needles out here. So... so um, we do a back burn. We take a bulldozer and a harrow and, and block it all up and then light each line. There's a line, there's a block behind us. And then, so basically this is a block, that's a block, and then there's another block beyond that. That's correct? right. Okay. That's right. And um, so all those lines are backing and, um, and it's, uh, well, let's see, it's about 20 minutes till six o'clock. So the humidity is gonna start rising around seven o'clock. So we'll let these lines back till then and then we'll start introducing some head fires. When that humidity and, rises. Um, so, so when the humidity rises, the fire is gonna start slowing way down. So we'll, we'll put some head fires in, basically light on the other side of the same fire break and let those fires run together. As y'all can see, the wind blowing this way, I think it's south or southwest so, wind today or something right, like that. So. Right. Basically, your 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 back your backfire is against the against the wind. That's correct, right? That's right. And That's so right. it moves real slow. This fire has been lit for about ten minutes, and it has crept maybe ten yards. Now you light that head fire with the wind, and it rips through there, and that's where you start getting some just that's super right. hot burn. This with track that. this track has had a pretty good thinning on it, so the crown is really open, and so you can you can allow a little more heat to. Um, to escape through the canopy. The canopy is not closed, therefore you won't brown the needles up as quick. Mm -hmm. It takes 140 to 140 degrees to brown a pine needle. So if that buyer is burning 800 to 1,000 degrees on the ground at 40 feet, it doesn't take much. Mm. So we like a little more breeze to um, to cool for the heat on the fire to mix with the cool air. But in this case here, it's it's doing a really great job, and the needles aren't even moving. Mm -mm. Now, uh, on cooler days, is it better? On cooler days, when you burn, is it you get a little bit more control? You feel like on those days than when it gets too hot? You can cover more ground quicker on cooler days. Okay. Um, you can run your you can run your fires hotter on the ground, especially in the morning. Um, we we like to we like to start our fires around nine o'clock in the morning when we're doing springtime burns. And, and uh, we like to finish between 12 and one o'clock when the humidity starts coming down around 45 to 50%. And um, you finish up, it's a, it's a wild process, but it, it, it is extremely effective. It's a beautiful thing when ground. it's done. So if you, if you had uh, any guesses, how long would it take after today for a turkey or a deer to walk through this? Okay, so, so I've been doing this 17 years, and, and um, about 15 years ago, I was out on a, on a clear-cut burn, which is where there's no standing timber left. It's been sprayed with a helicopter, and we go in and mm -hmm. burn all the debris. And I, I was patrolling the perimeter break, which is the outside fire break, and um, I came across six jakes walking in a line, and they were... The fire line is very similar to this one right here. 
and they were within, I'd say, probably four foot of the fire line <laughs> in the in the black, and they were vigorously pecking the ground and scratching <laughs> right behind the fire line. And I wish that I had a camera that day because it was quite a scene. And I, as I rounded the break, the Jakes saw me. They were probably about 20 yards from me. And they lifted their heads and they walked across the break and they went over there about 50 foot and they stopped and watched me pass. Not a care in the world. So it's a, it's a natural process. Um, all you deer hunters out there and you, you turkey hunters think that if, if you think that um, fire and smoke is going to bother and you can't hunt, it's actually <coughs> mask human scent. It's a natural process and wildlife are very, very familiar with it. So actually can use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm not a turkey hunter, but I'm a deer hunter and yeah. I've seen that. Well, so. even deer hunting with this, you'll notice too. So your first year fires, my wife has showed up now. Your first year fires your bedding cover will be limited, but your turkey habitat is phenomenal. And then the second year, you'll have great bedding habitat and deer will be super comfortable in them. And it's the benefit of fire because you're always rotating, which is, if you could explain briefly the why we rotate on this property, that's one of the reasons why, is you have bedding cover in one, good clean habitat in another for turkeys. So the deer and turkey could swap, which over the years we've noticed the deer hunting like in this block this year was a lot better because we did not burn in this particular block this year. So this food plot was hotter this year than it was last year because there's more bedding. This block behind us, this food plot, you burned this one last year and the deer hunting one wasn't as good. So that, that we noticed those contributing factors when you burn. But you also, right. we have never That's ever right. killed a turkey at the front of this property. And last year he burned up there and we killed one in it 15 days after you burn. It was, it was right there, it was on that other break. We, she shot it off of that pine tree right there and the turkey was in the burn over there, so. It's a very, it's a very good, um, it's a very good tool. Um, it's a very good plan. And this particular track is split in half. We, we burn every other block every other, other year. year. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been doing it about, what, six years now probably? I think this is the sixth year, yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, if, if, you spend the money on it and do some good planning the the results are phenomenal we went from having no turkeys on this property six years ago to now this is the best property we have to turkey hunt how many turkeys you heard out here four or five this year so far five five and four years ago we didn't even turkey hunt it because there was none on here so after the fire we started using the fire five years ago however long ago so immediately you could tell a difference the following year so pretty cool thank you sir for That's your right. input you're welcome this is a professional you get uh, to see somebody else other than me so we there have you a go. good time we have a good time it'll be fun doing it at night tonight too so that'll be interesting what's on that map okay so you can't really do how are you going to look so there's there's, six, there's 68 acres in the church
coming right down the road. And I'm coming right down the road. Hey, what'd you say? 15 minutes? Said, <laughs> <laughs> hey, how mad do you think Mitch is gonna be? I didn't even get the mouth call, so... <laughs> I had to freeze in it. Huh? I had to freeze in it. <laughs> I appreciate that, buddy. Seriously. Yeah, the other one's standing right there behind him. Well, I, I knew I heard one a little closer. I saw one of them dust their wings way up there with the graveyard. Oh, yeah. That was last I saw him until I saw his red head come around the corner. Because I knew they were going to find down that little fire. Yeah, button. that's what I was trying to get on. The, that's why I started calling to the left a little bit, trying to pull him back down. I thought they were going to go high on us right there. That's a good thing we didn't go trucking down. I saw the stick stuff here. It, it would make them kind of be like, yeah, there's probably something there. Yeah. <sighs> oh, he got some hooks, too. Does he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll see. He's, he was, you see that little... Pine tree, it was right where I was sitting. I was like, I can't let him get too far out here because he's going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would come out here and see us. I don't think he was seeing me where I was sitting, but. Mm. No, but buddy, I, this is the first time I've really heard the thunder in the chest. Oh, yeah, he, he was close, close when he got with that last time. Yeah. I mean. Shall, shall we send a Snapchat? <laughs> 18 strikes again. <laughs> I was filming through that. I was sitting by that one tree and I was filming through that junk right there. Was the peak meter on? Yeah, it was peak, but it was so dark. Oh crap. I couldn't tell what it the peak I could tell things were red. It looked it looked good. It looks good now at least. It's an autofocus now. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to tell you about the autofocus that you said was just like yours. He said there's no way. <laughs> yeah, he did. I told you I didn't want to go high. I didn't want to either. But I, when Mitch, when we got out the truck, I told him. All see, because right, if we went high right there, who they knows what it would. I bet you they were in that other food plotter. They were right off of it. I'm, I'm just saying, when I yelled to him the first time, he was a good little stretch over there. And well, I yelled to him the third time right there, and he gobbled, and I said, 
we better sit down and hurry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hurry up. We, we're not accomplishing anything standing around. Was there one that gobble over here? I thought I heard one earlier. Like, when we first, when we first yelped the here. first time, I heard. A, I thought I heard one over there. And I was like, do that again, because, you know. He and then these been... gobbled. Well, there they go. That's decent beard. Oh, look, where is the dude? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had a little curly one. A little, cur I was sitting there, I was a little like, curly cue. I noticed it when I was coming down the road. I was like, <laughs> got a weird little beard. Well, he was stuck to his feather. And I was like, everyone had shot his. Okay. Yeah, he got a little curly, curly mm -hmm. cue. We got one double beard out here somewhere. But, uh, oh, yeah. That's a nice one. Uh, that, that's a good one. Looks like he got a little beard rod or something going on there. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's the other falling out. What's that red at the end? That red twin? I don't know. See, let's see how the stuff falling it's out. It's falling out? Yeah. Or calcium deficiency one of the two. I don't know. We need to get these birds on a supplement yeah, or yeah. something. Y'all got to get some of that protein. We got to get some of that protein, you know, so they grow <laughs> big spurs. <laughs> this is great. Now. I mean, just. He's been doing it, too. Yeah, he was. He strutted right there in the sunshine, and then come around the corner and strutted a little bit. Could you see him on up there from where you were sitting? I could see him all the way. Yeah, when as soon as he hit the uh, the fire break right there where they pushed it up, I could see him all the way down. And the other one was the other one was up higher behind him, and I was like, oh. Well, I didn't know if you heard me say they're coming left because they were. You could see him up there. Oh yeah. Okay, I couldn't see him until they got there. Oh, I could. I saw the wings. Okay, they yeah, I couldn't see them until they got right there, and then I don't know if you heard me say they're in the road. Uh huh. I okay. heard you say that, but then you were like, <laughs> you said something about road again. And I'm like, well, that's great, but <laughs> <laughs> shoot, honey. Oh, there we go. Oh, got you a okay. little barred wings. Got them okay. barred wings. Okay, little little specialty here. That's great. I mean, what a way. April 2nd. Second full day of turkey season. Y'all had a slammer day yesterday, morning and afternoon. And you'll probably go hunt tomorrow morning and get you one yourself. Hopefully. All right. Good morning, everybody. If you can believe it, we're going turkey hunting this morning. Um, 6.10 right now. We should be gobbling in about 15 minutes. The uh, weather is... Oh, man. It's not very good. I can tell you that. I really probably should have just slept in, but um, we only got one, two, three, four more mornings to hunt. So I'm going to take advantage of everyone I can. So it rained a little bit last night, which is good because it's been absolutely dry as a dig on bone for the last two weeks. So it rained last night. Um, not a lot, just a just a little fizzle, um, and it's 59 degrees right now, but it feels a lot colder than that. Um, it's, it's not muggy at all, so that's good. And the birds are going, so that's good too. Um, but super overcast, cloudy, thick. Um, I made my mind to come up to this farm last night. Uh, we, me and my dad were going to come here, but there's another spot where there's been some birds super consistent at. And, this place we haven't hunted it in oh, I don't know it's been over two weeks so um, I went here yesterday and there was some sign here so we're gonna try it one last time I believe this is gonna be the last time we hunt on this particular farm so um, at least until we get back from going out west we we'll have two days to hunt when we get back from out west so before our season ends here in Georgia so we're gonna uh, give it the old try this morning I'll be filming myself so Forgive me if uh, something doesn't go right, but hey, we're getting towards the bitter end here, and we're going to uh, try to get it done, so see what happens. Well, as uh, I got there that morning and uh, got out the truck and eased down the road, a turkey gobbled right to my left about 200 yards, and 
it was in a very familiar spot. It's uh, a great spot late season. These birds love to roost in this spot. And this particular setup was about right where Anna's turkeys first got struck up when her and Cameron called them uh, to them that that April that day on April the second. It's just a great area, big high knob above um, these burned pines, which drops down to a big beautiful creek bottom. And these turkeys were roosted right above the creek bottom, right where I was hoping they'd be. And it was one big gobbler, and it sounded like two other gobblers off to my right. And uh, just a perfect scenario, being able to play them off each other and have the high ground on all the turkeys. And um, it was just a perfect scenario, and you'll see how it plays out. She car full of crack now, okay. Wonderful. Well, I hope I got it on that. What a freaking hunt, people. Oh my god.
of the whole worry about how big he is. But he's a pretty giant turkey, folks. Beauty, first of all. Beautiful job. He's not very big body. Like he may be 16, 17 pounds, but it is April 27th, which has been another good day historically. I think we've killed two or three turkeys on April the 27th. In the past, the most recent one I remember is Carson killing one out at one of our leases a few years ago. But uh, it's beautiful. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty huge turkey. He's got uh, I think one side's probably got inch and five sixteenths, inch and three eighths spurs, and the other one is like crooked, like it goes straight and kind of bends down and. I've only killed one other double bearded turkey before, but he had the same thing. He had a crooked spur as well. So, kind of unique. But, uh, this deal, not a whole lot of strategy, you know. I mean, I, we haven't hunted here. I think I, I hunted here last the morning I killed, which was April the 13th. So, that was exactly 14 days ago. So, two weeks exactly to the day. And, um,. I haven't hunted here. I think the landowners hunted here one time and um, nothing. And I came out here about a week ago to look for sign and I was extremely discouraged, quite frankly. And then I came out here yesterday and there was turkey sign everywhere. So I don't know if they just, a bunch of them just moved. <laughs> there is two birds gobbling over there and there was one or two other turkeys with him over here this morning. So I think I either heard four or five different turkeys gobbling this morning. I know for a fact there was at least two with him, if not three, because I think there was one, two, three, and then there was one for sure that way, because I about got up and left this turkey to go to him because he was gobbling so good. But, <clears throat> just awesome. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm very thankful. It's been a uh, extremely slow season. One of the worst seasons I've ever had, and mornings like this just <laughs> make it all worth it. Um, and I, I was about this close to not even getting up this morning, and I was I couldn't go back to sleep. That's the reason I came. I, I rolled over to go to sleep, and it was like three or four minutes had passed, and I couldn't go back to sleep. I was like, well, what am I doing? Just get up. And it's 60 degrees, windy, and cloudy, and these turkeys are gobbling mad. Just mad goblin. This one and that one for sure were gobbling their brains out. Um, but this property, we try to take care of it and I've just been so thankful the last few years. We've killed two turkeys off this place the last three years in a row. And it um, just seems like every year it gets even better. But there's a ton of habitat management. There's a ton of this that goes on. And I'm probably going to try to combine mine and Anna's hunt into this because we want to we want to kind of talk about this property and what makes it so special. And in that the fact that it went from being probably a farm that we didn't even think about during turkey season to probably our number one place where we go. Now, we had this burned, well hopefully I'll show that video on here, had this burned not too long ago, probably it was in the middle of March we burned it and it's just starting to come back and it's just beautiful. We've had a lot of success here in early May, late April um, after these burns and when this green vegetation starts coming up. And it's beautiful. Super thankful. Um, just don't know what else to say. <laughs> Tagged out in Georgia, and it feels weird to say that um, with the season we've had. But I mean, this morning is made up for it. We got the got everything we wanted. We got goblin. We got drumming. We got in your face. We got to watch him come for two or three minutes before I pulled the trigger. And I'll tell you, I was awfully worried because he. I almost smashed his stuff down in front of me. I was like, you know what? This cover I got you know, a lane to shoot on both sides of it, I'll be fine. And sure enough, he come right behind that stuff and I had to pick a hole through there to shoot him through. And uh, that little 20 gauge right there, that Franke Affinity, I absolutely love that thing. Bought it last year and I've really been really impressed with it. So thankful and very, very blessed to finish out my season here in Georgia. And we head west, we're leaving and exactly a week. <laughs> 